Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this day. A welcome, special welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time or the first time in a while. We're so glad to have you here. A few announcements uh, about how worship happens. Masks are optional here in the sanctuary. If you'd like a mask required section, we have one here in the transept. As you've come in, you'll all have gotten a cup of juice or wine and a wafer, and I'll explain more about that at communion time. And uh, you all got a welcome card. As you came in, please fill that out and put it in the offering plate so that we might know of your presence here this day. This weekend, of course, is Memorial Day weekend. And so at this time, I invite any uh, veterans to stand. And I ask us to take a moment of silence to remember all those who have given their lives in service to our country. So we'll take a moment of quiet. God, we give thanks for these men and women who have served our country and those who gave their lives in that service. Bless us in this nation of ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, a, a sad note that Al Walter, a longtime member here at St. Mark, has passed away. And so I will keep you posted as service uh, uh gets worked out for how we will remember him and celebrate his life. Um, But uh, keep uh, the Walter family in your prayers as they grieve. Today, our Thanksgiving for baptism will not be what's printed in your bulletin, but that's okay because it will still be a Thanksgiving for baptism. But just a note, I'm not, well, I'm off script, your script, but I'm on my script. (laughs) Um... Also, friends, uh, we all know it has been a really difficult week in the life of our nation as uh, the massacre in Uvalde, Texas, has uh, happened. And uh, we'll uh, say prayers about that this day. We'll um, address that in the sermon. But there's a resource that if you would like to spend some time, uh, uh, 60 days, in fact, journeying toward justice um, in a culture of gun violence, the ELCA has a resource Um, That's daily devotions, prayers, learnings. Um, I printed a few off, um, and they're at a a table in the back. Um, If you find that there are no none left, but you'd like me to print you one, uh, go ahead and put your name on the sign-up sheet. Uh, We'll also include it in our email newsletter this week um, for an electronic resource. But um, this is a way that we can all... um, delve into uh, this topic of gun violence, see what the ELCA uh, social statements have to say about it, and um, commit ourselves to walking that road of justice. I also invite your prayers. Uh, This coming Saturday, the Metro Chicago Synod um, will gather for its uh, Synod Assembly, and so um, Gina Dahlgren, Kevin Lang, David, and uh, Deacon David and I will be attending that. Uh, Pastor Carl, are you going? (laughs) <laughs> Pastor Carl gets to uh, claim the retirement status and not come, uh, but, uh, but we will be gathering, and so keep that assembly in your prayers. And then next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, which means uh, it's the celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit, and it's a day of red and festivity, so I encourage you uh, to wear red if you would like. Um, with those announcements, I encourage you to take a look at all sorts of other things that are happening here at St. Mark. Uh, that you can find in your bulletin. But with those announcements, we'll prepare our hearts for worship by listening to the prelude.
please stand as you are able for the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgive forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and placed us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you washed us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font and for all water everywhere, especially for Weller Creek, for this Plains River, and for Lake Michigan. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy all who thirst, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, from the minds of your form the minds of your faithful people into one and into your will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise that amid all the changes of the world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. 
in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the one who, through whom we pray, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. For our children's time today, as we get ready for the readings, we are thinking about loving service. And so, as you hear the stories today, and as you, we, we reflect on the sermon, we're thinking about loving service, which is really just a, a, a church, kind of a church way of, of thinking about the way we do things. And it's easy to do things uh, most of the time. Uh, sometimes we just need to do things uh, to help somebody out or to, to finish some chores. But we're being invited today to think about how we might do it in a loving way. Um, sometimes there can be a big difference between the way we just do things and the way we do it uh, with love. And so we're going to hear in the stories today how um, our love can make a difference and how sometimes we can do things uh, with love that we never thought we could do. And so um, we're listening for the Spirit's uh, inspiration uh, for our lives in little ways and in big ways today. How can love help us make a big difference? How can love help us um, do things we never thought possible? Okay, friends, so we're going to hear the first reading. Any friends who would like to join me in the great room for some holy moly's and some snacks and for some more conversation about loving service, you can meet me there. The first reading is from Acts. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune-telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. <clears throat> the crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourselves, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them to the outside and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let 
the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround the Lord. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of God's throne. Fire goes before the Lord, burning up enemies on every side. Lightnings light up the world, the earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens declare your righteousness, O Lord, and all the people see your glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before the Lord, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. God guards the lives of the saints and rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the honest of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. The second reading is from the book of Revelations. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Omega, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they might have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come. And let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon, amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints, amen. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, 
The world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I am parched. I am thirsty. For my tears have dried me out as I've wept for children and their caretakers who died at Robb Elementary. I am thirsty. Are you? I thirst for a week where we don't learn about another mass shooting, another event that has us grieving as a nation. I am thirsty. Are you? I'm angry that it happened again, that we let it happen again. I thirst for change so that children can go to school and be safe and not have to practice what to do if someone comes into their school who shouldn't be there, where a parent's prayer in the drop-off line is not, please let them come home safe. I thirst for change. I'm thirsty. Are you? I'm tired of money, meaning that injustice persists like it did for that woman possessed by a demon in our first reading who made her owner's money until she was healed by Paul. I'm tired of injustice persisting because the people with money want the laws about guns to remain the way that they are. I am thirsty. I am parched. Maybe you are too. For tears you've shed this week or tears you've shed for loved ones lost while serving this country remembered this Memorial Day. I am thirsty. I'm parched from racism that's hidden around every corner and the hard yet important and necessary work of rooting it out in our own lives and in our institutions. I'm thirsty. I'm parched. I need a tall glass of living water. I'm looking for the next water stop in this marathon of life where the pandemic drags on for another year, where grief is all around us, where uncertainty is the unstable ground under our feet, where we keep pretending that the world is the same when it has changed, when we keep going and going but I am thirsty. Let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes to take the water of life as a gift come. Today, we come. We come thirsty. And we hear this promise in our reading from Revelation that all who are thirsty may receive the water of life freely. So where is our water? Where is the cup of living water that we can drink deeply from? And does it come in a fire hose variety? Because that's what I want. That's what our world needs so that we can turn the hose on this thirsty world and saturate it with life and courage and change and God's way of justice. We come thirsty. And the cup we are offered is this gathering, this very act of worship, is a cup of cool water to sustain our weary souls. Like Paul and Silas sang those hymns in the shackles of that prison, we unite our voices this morning in song. We connect with one another in deep lament. You know, on Wednesday, the day that followed the horrible tragedy in Uvalde, Texas, I couldn't not cry. I sat at my desk and the tears simply leaked out. And the weight 
of the sorrow took my words away. And so I went home and I sat and I felt those feelings and it helped a little bit. But what helped, what really helped me was something I wasn't sure I had the inner strength to do. What helped me was when we came together with others from this congregation for Bible study. What helped me was joining words of lament and sorrow and feeling all of that together as one. To know that I didn't carry that burden alone. Our gathering on Wednesday for Bible study, our gathering together this day, there are protests against the ways of the world that draw us from God and from one another into little islands. We gather because we are one in Christ's love, in God's love for us and for the world. We come thirsty, and the cup we are offered is a chance to eavesdrop on a prayer that Jesus prayed, the one that we heard in our gospel reading, the one that Jesus prayed on his last night before the cross, not the one in the garden where he asked to have this cup removed. That doesn't happen in the gospel of John. We have instead this prayer where we hear Jesus desires and hopes and dreams and worries for us flow out in conversation with God. Every seventh Sunday of Easter, we hear a part of this prayer. And this year, we get to hear the part of this prayer is about us. Jesus prays for us, the ones who have heard the word from those who have gone before and have believed in Jesus because of their word. That's us. Jesus prays for us. Do you know the feeling you get? when you hear someone praying for you, when you get to listen in on someone's deep prayer of love for you. Summon that feeling now because Jesus is praying for you and for us. And I'll share those words again. He says, may all be one, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be completely holy, perfectly one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me because you loved me before the foundations of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. May all be one. May they be one as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer are one. May the love of God, which loved Jesus before the foundations of the world, be in us. And Jesus in us, and we in Jesus, this is the cup we are offered, a prayer for unity, a prayer for love, a prayer that we may love in a way that helps the world that does not know God, know God through our love, through our unity, through our witness, through the testimony of our very lives. We come today parched, thirsty, dried out from weeping, dried out from another mass shooting, dried out from it happening again, dried out from a system that lets injustice persist, dried out from a long journey through unsteady land. We come thirsty to a God who says, let all who are thirsty come. Let all who wish receive the water of life freely. Offered is this gathering together. The water we're offered is a prayer for unity and a vision that our unity and love can make a difference in this world. Friends, 
I'm not going to pretend that I know the way forward. I don't know how to make change happen, really happen this time. I don't know how to keep going in these unsteady times, in the parched places of this desert, this wilderness. I don't know what it will look like or how we'll do it, but I do know this. When we are one, when we are one with Jesus and one with the Father, when we are one with each other, we can do anything. When we are one, we witness to the God of love that can do anything, even call life out of death, resurrection out of crucifixion, love out of fear. And our unity, our love, our oneness testifies to that, speaks to that, is the cup of water that quenches our thirst enough to help us sustain another day, to fight for justice another moment, to speak love in a world screaming of fear and division, dare I say, our oneness, our united voice, cry, call for justice, can make change happen, can change the world because of God's love. So friends, drink deeply of the fire hose of God's love and salvation. Drink deeply of God's courage and call for just action. Drink deeply of our oneness. And together with me, with one another, turn the fire hose of God's love on the world so that all that are thirsty may receive Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your son are one. Extend the gifts that have been given by your spirit to all people especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make worthy the work of scientists who look to the stars and planets, as well as scientists who look to atoms and molecules, bring innovation and well-being to humanity through their discoveries. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and people. God, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry, especially those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the spirit of faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stir imagination and understanding throughout the church in the work of poets, theologians, and hymn writers. Lead us into new visions and fresh expressions of your presence, God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Unite us with those who grieve. We pray especially for those who grieve those lost in Uvalde, Texas this week. And stir up in us courage, courage to make change happen so that these sorrows and griefs need not happen again in our lives and in the life of this nation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Unite us with the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Train us to wait with eager longing for Christ to come again, even as we sense his presence with us now. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you.
please stand as you are able. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. As we gather at this table, you'll want to find your cup of wafer and juice or wine. You don't need to open it quite yet. We'll say the words of institution. We'll sing the Lamb of God. I'll say the words, taste and see that the Lord is good. And that's your cue to open up your wafer. We'll all partake of the body of Christ together. Open up your juice or wine and we'll all partake as one body, the blood of Christ together. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Gathered into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and the and power, the power and, the and the glory, forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. 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 Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life and love in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. People of God, receive this blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Oh, I did that again, didn't I? Oh. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God.